Hi everyone, I'm back again on the same familiar topic called heart attack. I call the heart, the pump, as the longest serving pump that is now under attack. Why did I use the word longest? Longest serving pump, yeah. The heart has been working before we were given birth to. So, pause. Put your age somewhere on a piece of paper. No one, your heart is older than that. Okay? Um, we'll discuss more today on this familiar topic. What are triggers of acute heart attack? Triggers are those factors that can actually bring up the signs and symptoms of heart attacks if the risk factors are present. In other words, they spark off the crisis or the provoking. Fit. Anger. I said it the other time. Make yourself happy. No. Many things will piss you off but just for the sake of your heart. Just ignore them. Be happy. Listen to music. Dance. Joke with your friends. Joke with your kids. Joke with your parents. Go to park. Watch you know, your sports people. You know, enjoy yourself. Exhaustion, or sometimes even at rest, if it is unstable and angina, could come up there. All physical exhaustion, particularly rigorous ones. For example, many cases of elderly dying at doorsteps after walking around in winter, or many come down with acute heart attack when they are shoving snow that is very familiar i told you this is not an abstract it's i don't know a common occurrence around us so cold weather netherly man shoveling snow suddenly holding the chest so we have to talk street drops mm, guys Cocaine causes acute myocardial ischemia. It increases the blood pressure. And there's possibility of myocardial infarction, myocardial ischemia. Decrease oxygen supply. Why? There's possibility of anemia, a posemia of the sospasm when there's arteriomatous plaques blocking the supply, the free flow of blood. You know, the oxygen is in the blood, as the hemoglobin. Oxygen demand increases. How, why? Is it not my normal heart? But when the heart is enlarged, or when there's obstruction blocking the left ventricle, we call it left ventricular output obstruction. Maybe there is a body stenosis somewhere, or the heart is just moving fast to tachycardia because you've taken some medications, you have fever, there's increased work of thyroid gland, hyperthyroidism, or you are emotionally stressed out. These are you know, triggers that could let us have a stack. What are the symptoms? The patient will probably tell a lot of stories about you know, having pressure or fullness at the chest region. And it could be just nausea or just being oscillated. There could be chest pain. That is what many people will expect that we are not going to get that all the time in everybody. So when there is chest pain, the doctor will ask, what 
use the pen relating to anywhere on the scale of one to ten. I don't know how you describe this pen. One being the lowest and ten being the worst pen ever. You do others. This could relate to the arm, to the neck, to the jaw, and even the abdomen. And it could be presented like a back pain. Actually, in some women, that might be the only presentation. That could be tingling, epigastric discomfort, shortness of breath, lightheadedness, or dizziness. What are the signs of heart attack? These are stuff that EMS people, those good people that will rush to your home to pick you up, will likely see or the nurses waiting to help you and the doctors waiting in the emergency room will likely see. Be diaphoretic, be sweating, leave eye side, you're clenching your hand along your chest region, describing it. Disney. Autopnia, you can't just lie flat, finding it difficult. Breathing will become difficult when you do. Cough, because there's possibility of pulmonary edema. Periorbital or peritibia edema, because the heart is failing right now, become restless. Or you are obviously anxious and there's positive of wars. This is not somebody that will start not joking about what happened during Raptor's game. Wheezing. When the doctor puts the stethoscope at the chest region, they pick that, or sometimes it could be loud enough to be heard. All those signs and symptoms will present under typical heart attack. But sometimes we have what we call atypical heart attack or atypical myocardial infarction or silent heart attack. Who are the people that could present with this? Because this is dangerous. It's killing. It's common in females. Mostly, no pain is associated. And when they do, it will be back pain alone. There could be mind squeezing or just a little bit tightening around the chest region. There was a very good hardworking registered nurse who finished working in a day and uh, went to a restaurant, went home, you know, had the live the already drawn pattern before her, sent a message on social media about what she would do the next day, the following week, and then she started feeling this discomfort along her chest region, and she went to the emergency room. You know, I said, a registered nurse, hardworking, intelligent woman, went to the emergency room. So, this has nothing to do whether the patient doesn't know what she's talking about or the doctor don't know what they're doing or whatever. It is a silent heart attack. So she went, they saw her, and then they said, okay, not in much. If uh, you are not still feeling comfortable, you can come back. She said, thank you to her colleagues, the emergency room nurses and the doctors. She went home. And she didn't wake up again. She died. The autopsy revealed that she died of myocardial infarction. This is a true life story. I know the friend who told me this story. And if I mention the name of the hospital, those who know her still know. My Prayer goes to the family and all our friends. So in females, this is very common. In diabetic patients, diabetic patients, that's why we don't joke with the treatment. In elderly people and those who have 
had heart surgery in the past, either cardiac transplant or coronary artery bypass graft, or patient with high pain threshold. Some people don't feel pain just easily like that. I've seen a woman in level one who would not be shouting on top of her voices while having contractions. Instead, she was making some, you know, just little noise and, mm, mm, until the head of the baby was at the perina. Neuropathy or denervation, either secondary to surgery or there's more medication causing that or there's diabetes mellitus somewhere. Could no mask the possibility of having the pain. When some people have high bitter end of phase and anti-inflammatory cytokines, then they could mask the pain. Be suspicious if the past history of coronary artery disease is present in this woman or this man, or it's not even present, but there is high risk factors. High risk factors. If there are many, be suspicious. If it's not presenting in the typical way, which is a typical presentation, then how do we get to help this good human beings that are suffering. The first thing is you screen with stress test. If you think from history and physical examination that this person is likely going to have trouble, screen with stress test. Some centers may even use ambulatory monitoring. Yeah, when there's high level of suspicion. Use EKG and echo with myocardial perfusion and of course troponin that is one of the cardiac enzymes so it was ck mb and troponin like i said good history taking and physical examination will raise the suspicion those who need screening the most are good guys in the raptors in nfl in cfl the athletes, pilots, because so many lives are under their watch, sailors, drivers, and so on. How about willing patients? Like if I know that my father has died of heart attack and I have a sedentary lifestyle and I eat all sorts of junks and I walk to my doctor. I said, doctor, can I be chair? I'm like, afraid I might come down with heart attack. Why not? And of course, like I said earlier, high index of suspicion. So that a lot of people will not be dying silently of silent ischemia. Thank you very much for watching my video. We have more to talk about on this same familiar topic called heart attack. See you soon. Thank you.